This game has one of, if not the most grindiest platinum of all time, and for some reason, I decided to go through this terrible grind, and that game is Fortnite. No, not that Fortnite. I mean, this Fortnite. Fortnite is rated at a 3 out of 10, which seems easy, right? Well, yes, it is easy. The hard part is going through 999 hours of this game. So let's go over my journey of getting Fortnite's Platinum Trophy. There are 46 trophies in this game, so let's get into the most grindiest Platinum ever. So Fortnite's Platinum goes over the Save the World mode, not Battle Royale like most people know the game for. I've played Save the World since 2018, and I've always enjoyed this mode. This was Fortnite's original mode before Epic created Battle Royale and made their bag. If you've never heard of or played Save the World, basically you are the commander of a group called Home Base, one of the only groups left on Earth after the storm took over and left Husky everywhere, and you do exactly what the mode is called, Save the World. There are different sets of missions that mostly consist of protecting an objective, but sometimes you gotta rescue survivors, destroy encampments, and other things as well. The game starts you off with a tutorial where you just learn the basics of the game. They also teach you how to craft a weapon, and I got a trophy for doing that. A little bit later, you need to defend some survivors, and I got another trophy after doing that. At the end of the tutorial, you launch a rocket that sends you to Stonewood, the first zone, and I got one more trophy for completing my first mission. From this point on, I don't have any more trophy footage until the grind, I just recorded those for that part. I'm still gonna go over the trophies, but I won't have any reactions to them. So after reaching Stonewood, you get access to the Storm Shield, and you need to defend this to get access to more missions. I got a trophy for defending it for the first time, and I got many more trophies for other Storm Shields. And after that, I got access to all of the different heroes. There are four hero classes, Soldier, who focuses on offense, Outlander, who focuses on farming and gadgets, Constructor, who focuses on building and defense, and Ninja, who focuses on mobility. Every hero class has its use and there is no best class, but some heroes are better than others. The next trophy is for completing the quest before and after science. The quest itself doesn't matter, I want to talk about the mission. The quest takes place during a mission called Fight the Storm, where you need to defend this machine called an Atlas. You need to find the Atlas and collect Blue Glow to activate it. The quest version of this mission makes you defend it for 3 minutes, but normally you have to defend it for 8 minutes. I like this mission, but it does have one big issue, and that's the bad spawns it can have. I mean, just look at how bad this one is. This is such a bad spawn then, what the freak? How do you protect the set of the sin? I don't even know how I'm properly supposed to build this, bro. This is easily the worst build I've ever done, because this spawn is like one of the worst spawns I've seen. After that, I completed the quest called Ride the Lightning. This quest had me completing a mission of the same name. For this mission, you need to find this van owned by a man named Lars. Lars needs our help to get his van ready to scan the storm, so we attach a balloon to it so we can go into the storm. But we need to power the balloon, so we need to defend it from two waves of enemies to give it time to prepare. This isn't that bad of a mission. The next one is Retrieve the Data. This mission requires another balloon, but this time we're retrieving data from it. We can either wait for the balloon to land, or shoot it down if we're ready. The quest version of this mission is the original version, which is a classic defense mission, but normally the storm closes in on the balloon, limiting where you can go during it. It doesn't change the objective, but it does make it a little more interesting. Taking a break from missions, the next two trophies have to do with defenders. Defenders are AI that will take the place of missing teammates. They use whatever guns and ammo you give them, and are not useless like most AI you see. The trophies are just for using them in a mission and a storm shield. Going back to missions, the next one is Rescue to Survivors. This mission has you rescuing survivors, as the title suggests. There isn't much to it. The first version has vehicle survivors, random survivors, and survivors that require you to find this medkit, which bugs out a lot. This mission is fun, but it does get old hearing Survivor in danger! all the time. This mission will be very important for one of the grindy trophies later. And speaking of survivors, the next trophy is for completing a quest called All Together Now. This is a daily quest to rescue 50 survivors, so you can get this at a completely random time. I'm not sure why it's a trophy though. One special thing to know about this quest is that it's bugged in the player's favor. For some reason it counts two survivors instead of one, so you can get this done faster. Keep this in mind for later. The next trophy is for completing the sixth Storm Shield defense. Since I don't have footage of this, I'm going to talk about what changes with each defense. So every once in a while, the game will add an amplifier to the area. This strengthens the Storm Shield's power, but also adds an extra objective to defend. So now some ways will make you defend an amplifier instead of the Storm Shield. As you do more defenses, you unlock higher level missions and earn survivor slots, which is how you increase your power level. The final trophy for Stonewood is Launch the Rocket. This is for completing all of the main quests. The final quest in every zone will be a mission where you need to launch a rocket to get to the next zone. 
you go through three waves of husks, and at the end, you get a cool cutscene of the rocket getting launched. And that leads us to Plankerton. Since this is a new zone, we need to complete another six Storm Shield defenses. The difficulty starts to ramp up here, but it's still pretty manageable. The next four trophies I'll mention are for evolving my items. Plankerton adds a new feature called Evolution, and it allows you to increase the max power level for your items while giving them big stat increases, but the higher level weapons and traps do end up requiring higher level resources. Now let's get on to the new quest submissions. The first one is Two Swirls. This quest has me completing a mission called Fight the Category 2 Storm. This is the same as the original Fight the Storm, but instead of defending one Atlas, it's now two Atlases. While I'm talking about this, I might as well mention the other two trophies that involve three Atlases and four Atlases. These can get pretty tough, having to defend four objectives. The next mission is Build a Radar Grid. This is a 20 minute mission where you need to build radar towers around the map. After you build a tower, it will scan for something, depending on what material is required. For example, if the tower is made out of brick, it will scan for chests. The third mission is Repair the Shelter. This mission is about repairing a shelter, obviously. To do that, you first need to find 8 hidden modules around the map. These can sometimes be hard to find, but if you do get stuck, the game sends someone named Seabot to help. You need to defend him, and after the defense, he'll mark 2 new modules on the map. After the 8 modules are installed, you do a 4 minute defense. The fourth mission is Deliver the Bomb. This one has you finding an entity called the Rift and you need to destroy it with a bomb. So you need to find the armory where the bomb is built and then build tracks to lead it to the launcher. Us will come for the bomb as it's moving to the launcher, but if it gets destroyed then you can just make a new one. After it's at the launcher, you need to activate the launcher and defend it for 4 minutes. Last but definitely least, there's Evacuate the Shelter. Instead of repairing the shelter, you need to protect the shelter so that it can evacuate survivors. I don't like this mission, and that's for two reasons. One, you have to wait for 10 minutes and you only actually do something for like 3 of those minutes. And two, they don't tell you anything about the defense until the 7 minute mark. So let's say I would have protected the shelter with metal, as I normally would. Well, in 2 minutes and 15 seconds, the game would have told me that the husks have the element of nature, and metal is weak to that. So now I would have had to break the entire thing down to switch the brick. They could just tell you this stuff when you first start, but I guess that's too much. But after the 10 minutes, you need to defend it for 6 more minutes. And that's the end of Plankerton, besides another launch the rocket. So now we move to Candy Valley. Once again, we need to complete 6 Storm Shields here. Candy is where I'd start considering using something called Trap Tunnels. In the higher level zones, guns cannot keep up with how many husks spawn, so we build Trap Tunnels to control their path and deal with the giant hordes. It's very effective, and it's cool to see all the numbers pop up. When I was playing through Candy, I completed a questline called Toxic Treasures. This was a set of quests that required me to kill Mimics, which are fake chests. I don't remember how many Mimics were required, but it had to be a lot if there were 10 stages. Mimics aren't super common either, so that makes this an RNG trophy. Candy doesn't have any new missions, at least not for trophies, but there is one that stands out from the rest. That mission requires you to beat the Storm King. This is the first and only boss save the world has, and it's pretty cool. You gotta shoot these crystals on him, and after destroying three of them, he gets staggered and needs to build up to melee his horn. Repeat that once more, and he's weak enough for normal attacks. After he's defeated, he leaves a little teaser that they never address, but if you know, you know. So that's the end of County Valley, and after one more rocket launch, it's on to the final zone, Twine Peaks. You know the drill, six more Storm Shield defenses. Guns are pretty much worthless in Twine Peaks, so you have to use trap tunnels. Besides the Storm Shields and high level missions, Twine sadly doesn't have much going on. Its questline wants you to complete three random missions at each power level, and it wants you to complete so many of these. I haven't even completed these, and I've been at Twine since 2019. I really wish Epic would give Twine Peaks some love and give it an actual questline, but they think the story is over, and they barely support the mode as it is, so that'll never happen. One cool thing that they did add was the Mythic Storm King. Sure, this is a reskin of the OG Storm King, but it's still cool because it's endgame content, and you get access to Mythic weapons, which are some of the best weapons in the game. But now it's time to talk about the most infamous part of this Platinum, the Grindy Trophies. I'll start by talking about the easiest of these trophies, Go Gnome. This one just requires the player to destroy 100 gnomes in missions. This one comes naturally, especially for me since I used the Xenon Bow, which shoots through walls and usually hits objects I don't mean to hit, like gnomes. I did this one a while ago, so I have no footage. The same goes for this next one, Loot Legend. This one requires the player to search 300 chests. This one is still easy, but I do remember having to go out of my way for this one. Every mission has a few chests to get, but a good one to farm is any build the radar grid mission. Some of the radar towers are chest radars, so if you build those towers, they mark chests and will continue to mark them until there are no more, as long as you have the blue glow to keep using them. If your teammates open chests, they also count, so you could get them to help a little bit. But it's time to talk about the actual grind, starting with Unspeakable Horrors. 
This one requires the player to kill 20,000 mist monsters. Mist monsters are special types of enemies. There are four types of them, the Taker, Blaster, Smasher, and Flinger, who only spawns during defense missions. This one was easy to farm for me because I'm always doing destroy the encampments, which has you destroying a minimum of 5 encampments to spawn waves of enemies. The 4 bonus super encampments usually spawn mist monsters though, so since I always destroy those as well, it was a good way to farm them. Alternatively, mist monsters can just sit around the map, and they spawn during defenses, and you can find them during storm chests and shadow orbs as well. But after that trophy, the grind ramped up a lot for me. I got unspeakable horrors pretty easily and naturally, but these next 4 trophies took ages to finally complete. We'll start with Talented Builder. This one requires the player to build 500,000 structures. In my 5 years of playing Save the World, I only had over 100,000 before I focused on the trophy. Not every mission requires big amounts of builds, if any at all. The only time you'd probably get tons of builds is when you're building trap tunnels, but even then, it would still take forever. I found a strategy for this. There are two elements to it. Number one, if you build in the Storm Shield, it counts towards the total and it actually registers them if you complete a defense. So what I did was start up with Stonewood Endurance, finish the first wave, which is 2.5 minutes long, and then let the Huss destroy the Amplifier on wave 2, giving me a successful completion. But there's also element number 2. My teammates' builds also count towards the total, so sometimes during missions and the Storm Shield, I got some subscribers to also build with me. I finally have footage for these, so here's my reaction. I'm about to get a trophy for Fortnite, bro. After like, 2 years. 500,000 out of 500,000 structures built. I just need to finish the mission and we're getting our trophy. I don't care about this loot. I don't care. There it is. Open. Talented Builder. This banner goes hard too. There are currently like 24 hours until the next season. And I'm level 365. And this is mostly just save the world. I got like... 150 or so on BR, but the rest just save the world. Just thought I'd give you guys this little update while we're here. The next trophy is Guardian Angel. The best way to grind this one was to repeat Rescue the Survivors missions. I have a lot to talk about with this trophy, and I'll start by talking about a few strategies for this mission that I have. Number one, I start with the outskirts because that's the area that usually had the more hidden survivors, and it's also the same strap that I use for the zones. Number two, when you see these RV survivors, you can build under them and the Hus will try to attack them, but the survivor is invincible because as long as the vehicle is not destroyed, they're immune. I use this whenever the survivors were on the edge of the map. I mostly use a different version of this that uses the Xenon Bow. You can shoot the survivors off of the vehicle, which will also make them immune. This also works with the car survivors, unlike the building strat since the car is too short. Most people don't know about this, and it was funny to see people defend invincible survivors. If any of y'all are going for this plat for some reason and want the Xenon Bow, you can get it from Llamas or research it in the collection book. Number 3, Stonewood's Rescue to Survivors is the best version of this mission. This is because the higher zones add extra types of survivors. Plankerton adds down survivors and shelters. Down survivors require you to request a medbot and give it 2 blue glow in order to revive the guy. This can slow down progress since you gotta go out of your way to grab blue glow and of course stop to attend to him. The other problem is that sometimes he gets pushed out of his spot by enemies, and that's a problem because the medbot prompt doesn't follow him, it's stuck to his original spot. So if he moves, you gotta try to figure out where he was originally, so he might as well be bugged. The other type of survivor is the shelter survivor, which is marked by an exclamation mark, and that location is a shelter that they are currently missing from, and then you gotta find them using a magnifying glass on the map. The problem with these guys is the waste of time, but also the fact that they sometimes don't even spawn. So you just wasted your time going to that shelter just for them to not exist. The last survivor is Canny Valley's Antenna Survivor. This one requires you to pick up an antenna and then build up to complete it and talk to the survivor at the bottom. This one isn't horrible, especially since it allows you to get some extra builds, but like the Shelter Survivor, he can also not spawn sometimes. Since Stonewood doesn't have these types of survivors, it's the best version of the mission to do. Finally, do you remember how I said that altogether now would be important? This is why. Remember that it counts two survivors instead of one. This is really important for this trophy, because for some reason, this bug also affects the Guardian Angel progress. So not only will you get the V-Bucks faster, but it also allows you to do less missions for the trophy. It may only be by one or two, but any reduction on missions is welcome for this grind. Okay, explaining out of the way, here's me finishing this. This is the last mission for the survivors. We are at 9,999, man. It's been a long time coming. Cause yeah, my, my cam is bugging out right now, but we're on the last survivor, man. Yeah, like literally today I found that I could get rescue survivors on Plankerton, play with others, so I've just been grinding this out the entire time. 
<laughs> I've been grinding this out, and it's actually been like the most fun I've had with playing with others in a while. And I'm probably just gonna play on Plankerton for the rest of it. There it is, 10,000 out of 10,000. Oh, yes. Okay, get this out of here. I could care less. Guardian Angel. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go. Guardian Angel. Let's go, bro. That trophy feels good. The next grind is World Explorer. This trophy requires the player to explore 1,500 zones. There isn't much to this one. Exploring a zone is just going around the entire map, clearing the gray fog around it. You'll know you made progress when you get the exploration badge. The only strategy for this is to explore the zone in every mission. Do not forget to explore it. A small tip is what I said during the survivors, which is to explore the outskirts first, and then explore the inner area after. It kinda just makes it flow a little better. That's all there is to say, so here's the final one. This is the last mission I need to get the zone trophy. This is taking the longest of the non-play with others trophies. Because you can only do this once per mission. Like, builds and survivors, you can do a lot in one mission. This, you, you can only do one mission. Alright, 1300 zones, let's go. Just need to finish the mission. Okay. Okay, I don't care about that. I don't care about the chest. Yep. There it is. World Explorer. One trophy left, bro. Now it's time to talk about the final trophy that I keep mentioning. Plays well with others. This trophy requires me to complete 1,000 play with others missions. And I only had 21 going into this grind. These missions are pretty much exactly as they sound. They're missions where I play with randoms. It's basically like filling the squad, but for these, it's a random mission, unlike Phil where I can choose my mission. I don't like play with others, and that's because some people suck in this mode. I have many examples of bad experience during this grind, so let's just go over them. The first one is the thing most people sadly know Save the World for, and that's trading. I didn't encounter it often, but I encountered it enough to have some clips of it. I was trying to start the mission here, but this fool was constantly trying to get my attention and I had to ignore them. What do you want? I'm not trading with you. Get the freak out of here. I will not be trading with you. Nope. Dude, stop trying to trade. Oh yeah, I can grab this. Stop, dude. You are so annoying. You're so annoying. <laughs> this guy is so annoying, bro. Yeah, leave. Yeah! Let's go! He left! Let's go! There was another scenario that didn't have to do with me, but someone else. Unfortunately, someone got scammed. I heard the scammer say something about leaving to do something, and he left with this guy's items. I feel bad for the guy, so I dropped him some god rolls and stuff for free. But this is a lesson. Do not trade. If it's your friends, fine. You should be able to trust your friends, but don't trade with these randoms. Otherwise, you might end up like this guy. This one isn't very common, but griefers. We had traps down to deal with the husks, and this fool just started breaking them. Hey, stop! What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? What the freak are you doing? What are you griefing for? Get out of here, dude. Useless piece of garbage. Worst teammate I've ever seen, dude. This is the kind of stuff that I don't want to see and play with others, bro. This is the kind of stuff right here, bro. This is why I don't like playing play with others. Stop it! I think he was trying to get kills for a quest or something, so if that was the case, I knew I could get back at him with my turrets. Watch this! Nah! 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 You wanna do stupid stuff? You wanna do stupid stuff? Watch this! Watch this! Ooh! You lost everything now! You wanna grief so badly? Ooh! Now look at you! You are trash, bro! You care about your challenges that badly? Go do it solo. Don't ruin the experience for everybody else. Go do that stuff solo. Then there was this other goofball who kept editing the pyramids in our build, and the husks were getting through because of it. I don't have my reaction, but I know I was mad. But the thing I hated the most about this grind was people not voting on the missions. So to start objectives, most of the players need to vote yes, but most people in stone would suck at doing that. It's as simple as just holding a button and pressing yes, but people can't seem to do that and it makes missions take way longer than they need to. There was one scenario that was the last straw for me. In this mission, people weren't voting. They weren't doing anything special enough to not vote, and eventually, I had enough and I had to do this. Oh my... Bro. 
votes on the mission. Damn, man. It gets better, though. Look at what this moron says in the chat. Bro, this is this is the worst team that I've ever seen. He's he was literally gonna keep us forever. That's actually so ridiculous. That mission is what made me switch to Plankerton, and that was such a great decision. People weren't morons, and I got better missions like rescue the survivors and destroy the encampments. The non-voters were mostly gone, but there's still one scenario I want to talk about. So you can also increase the mission's difficulty for more rewards, which I never do because those extra rewards suck. But this guy wasted 10 minutes of our time trying to increase the difficulty to the max. I could have done another mission in this time, and I really should have left, but he did that, and look at the garbage we got. I can literally get four times that amount of gold from a single daily quest. The play with others missions were easily the worst part of the grind for me because of the morons and the boredom. I could have had way more progress going into this had I done play with others from the beginning, but of course I wasn't thinking about trophies when I was grinding the game out. If I was thinking about them, then I would have been doing these from the start, which is what I'd recommend. But finally, after months of grinding, it came to an end. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were here chat y'all were here man let's do this plays well with others and hero of the storm it's finally over man it's finally over dude the grind is finally over man it's finally over i gotta change that banner right now I'm flexing that all the time. This is probably one of the rarest obtainable banners. Like, most people don't have this. I want to see what level I am. Like, literally, I've gotten, like, only seven levels in Battle Royale this season. I want to see. Okay, we're level 140. I have no idea how much time it actually took me to go for the Platinum, because I have lots of time just casually playing Save the World and Battle Royale and all that stuff, but... I combine all of my hours across PC, the account I used to play on, and this one, and it adds up to 5,149 hours. Everything I would say in the outro, I already said in the voiceover. I, there's not really much else to say. You already know how, the grind, how I felt about the grind and everything. But I'll leave you guys with this. I don't recommend this Platinum to anybody. Even if you enjoy Save the World, I still find it hard to recommend the game because it's just so grindy and just, at least my experience was just so terrible. So I don't know if I could really recommend this to anybody, but if you are going to go for the Platinum regardless, I hope the tips I gave throughout the video will help you. And something I forgot to mention, I really do like this mode. I may not recommend the Platinum to anybody, but this mode is super underrated in my opinion. I really wish Epic would support the mode more, because this mode has so much wasted potential. I mean, there's a reason why I dumped a thousand hours into this mode alone. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. I don't promote it often, but I do have a supporter creator code, so if you want to support me in Fortnite and any other Epic Games products, as my homie Nightwing said, remember to use code SHARDIX in the item shop for good luck. You heard the man. This is easily the most grindiest Platinum I've ever gone for, but another grindy Platinum I've gone for is Black Ops 3. And if you want to see me go for that, that video is on the end screen, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.